Hello, would you like to improve your keeper rate for wildlife photography and bird photography? Do you ever struggle with birds in flight or fast animal movement or wildlife or birds partially obstructed by limbs and branches and other foliage? Then stay tuned and I'll show you my settings for dual back button focus, which makes it easier and faster to acquire focus and keep focus. As I discussed in my previous video, the three elements of nature photography, one of those key elements is knowing your subject and then knowing how to use your gear to photograph that subject. And as we all learn when photographing birds, they're not the easiest thing to acquire focus on. They're always moving. They seem to always be partially obstructed. So using the best focus area and being able to quickly select the best focus area is extremely valuable in order to get your focus nailed. And the method that I use is dual back button focus and I'll show you how I set up my camera to do this. Back button focus, as most of you know, decouples your shutter release from your focus activation and instead uses a button on the back of the camera to activate focus. If you don't know how to do this, Stay tuned till the end of the video and I'll show you my menu settings for how to set up back button focus. The method that I use for dual back button focus utilizes two independent buttons on the back of the camera to initiate focus independently. I have seen other bird photographers use similar dual back button focus methods and I continue to refine my setup as my photography changes as well. And I should note that the focus mode that I am using is AFC or continuous autofocus, which I'm sure most of you are using for wildlife photography. Why dual back button focus instead of a single back button focus? Well, it allows me to more precisely and quickly select the focus area that I need for the scenario that I am in. I find that for still animals, or animals that are partially obstructed, I can better control the focal point by using non-tracking focus areas. For faster moving animals, such as birds in flight, I find that using a tracking focus area gives me better results. Also, with dual back button focus, I can quickly change between the two sets of focus areas based on the scenario I'm in or based on the scenario I believe is going to happen. Also, by using dual back button focus, I can quickly switch between the focus areas simply by moving my thumb from one button to another button. So let me show you what that looks like on the back of my camera. I've got a couple models that have stepped in for me that are going to serve as subjects for this demonstration. And I'm shooting on a Sony A1, so if you're using a different camera system, obviously your button programming and your setup will differ accordingly. So, as you see, there's a white focus area in the center. I have my AF on button program for back button focus for the non-tracking focus areas. I've got my AEL button set up as back button focus for the tracking focus areas. Then on top of my camera, I've got my C2 button programmed to scroll through the different tracking areas that I have enabled. So C2 button, you see the focus area is spot small, press it once, focus area now is spot large, press it a third time, focus area is now wide. So quickly pressing through those, you see that I can control my focus area uh, just with the press of a button from small to large to wide. And again, you can set those up, uh, the different focus areas that are loud and down, select them to the ones that you want to use. So the AF on button, again, is focus area non-tracking. You see it turns green on the small, so it's grab focus on the back of the duck. Press the C2 button and I go to spot large. Again, grabbing area, focus on the back of the, uh, the duck again. Press the C2 button again, and now I'm focus area wide. Engage focus, and you can see it's jumping around a little bit, 
picking up whatever is closest, I believe. Let's go back to spot small. AEL button again is my back button focus for focus area tracking. And here you see the focus area turns green with lines on each side, indicating that is grab focus and is tracking. Press again, focus area spot large. Same thing occurs on the focus area turning green, lines on each side of the box. Focus area wide. This time it's grabbed on to the head of the duck. Go back to spot small. So let's show you a little bit of a difference between non-tracking and tracking. So if I grab focus tracking, non-tracking, I'm sorry, you see as I move it, I may lose focus. And it's going to jump to wherever it does grab focus. And let's see if I can get it to lose focus again. It's like right in there, the transition it will. But it's going to focus wherever that spot is. There it's losing focus, grabbing the edge. Now if I use tracking, once I've grabbed that focus, no matter how much I move it, it grabs on and doesn't let loose. So it tracks, in other words. Same here, it will track it. So in this instance, I'm moving the camera, obviously, but if the bird's moving, it provides the same result where it will track it. So just by pressing one of these buttons, one or the other, non-tracking or tracking, I can quickly change my focus areas in that manner. Then by toggling through my C2 button, I can select the, the size of the focus area from small, spot small, spot large, to wide. So it's a very convenient way and a very fast way to be able to rapidly change your focus area and be able to switch between focus area non-tracking and focus area tracking. Furthermore, I have a button the center of my scroll wheel on the, the Sony A1 that I can select the face eye subject. So here if I select bird and let's go to focus area wide and track it will track the eye of that duck. If I get over here let's see if I can grab that owl as it does. Jumping around a little bit, a little bit harder to pick up focus on that it will grab the eye of the owl or close to it. Looks like it's probably jumping a little bit, but it's capturing that. If I get it into, let's say, focus area spot, still grabbing the eye and tracking it. Here, I can also use my joystick and move my spot, my focus area spot, to wherever I want it and I can grab it by non-tracking and then it will lose it. I can grab it tracking and it will keep it. So again, very fast, very effective way to set up for dual back, back button focus, non-tracking, tracking, and then on top to be able to scroll through the focus areas. As shown in this example, a small spot non-tracking focus area can be more precise if the birds are partially obstructed. And a small non-tracking focus area can even be used for birds in flight if you can capture it and track it manually. Tracking can even be helpful when there are small movements. The focus area size is also critical, whether it's for tracking area or non-tracking area. As you can see in this example, it's possible for the wider tracking areas to miss focus on other potential targets rather than the intended subject. For birds in flight and other fast moving animals, using a tracking area focus is obviously very beneficial. So even in this example where the birds are actually too far away to photograph, I'm able to grab focus and track them until I release the focus 
and reinitiate focus to follow it again. So here are the menu settings on my Sony A1 for setting up back button focus. So first I come to page 21 of 53 and autofocus with shutter is off. You see the selection possibilities are on or off. Select that as off and that removes the autofocus from the shutter release. Then we go to page 43 of 53. And we go to custom key settings for picture mode. And you can see here I have number two button, that's my AEL button, tracking on plus autofocus on. On number three, I have AF on, which is my AF on button anyway. Then we go to the top and we see number four, that's the C2 button. I have that programmed as switch focus area. So that's what allowed me to toggle through the, the selected focus areas. And then in addition, if I go to page 22 of 53, focus area, you see there's a focus area limit and I can down select which focus areas I want to include and which I want to eliminate. So if it's checked, it's included. So wide is included, as I said, spot small, and spot large. If I wanted to, I could include the others as well. That's it. That are, those are the settings for the Sony A1. I'm not sure what they are on other cameras. I always hear that the other menu systems are easier so for you Nikon and Canon users, it should be even easier.